Hey people, welcome, welcome, welcome to another Sunday. Hey, welcome, welcome guys to another Sunday. Hi, Denizel Design. Hi, Tommy Sambo. Hi, everyone. <laughs> I'm just reading the names that are joining. Hi, Gold Jewel 25. Hi, everybody. How's your Sunday? How's your Sunday going? How's your Sunday been? Needlework by Mari. Hi. Mari Chu, I think. Hi, Brandy Chong. Hey, everybody. Welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hi, Mimi's Kitties. Ankara. Hi, Victoria. How are you? How's everybody? How's your Sunday? How's it been? Today is another Sunday where we're going to be going live with a mom community. Um, and our mom community today is winning is winning. I absolutely, absolutely, absolutely love her page. I love what she does. I love her community. Um, how's my baby, Victoria? I love her community. I love, excuse me. I love everything she stands for and how she chooses to educate. And I absolutely love her brand. Um, she started a, I think it's utensils, baby utensils, like kit. And it's the cutest little thing. I feel like I missed the train because my kids are so much older. So that's good to hear. My kids are so much older, so we can't use it anymore. Anyway, today is another episode of talking about immunity. It's cold. The, we're in that season where cold, flu, kata, and all the rest are happening, right? So today, that's what we're going to be talking about. Um, so let me go ahead and invite our guest. So typically, the way these work is I come on here. is winning community um or you follow her if you don't follow her you should actually um and essentially just answer those questions for you so yeah that's what we're going to be doing today our topic for today is what to do to stop it what to do before your child gets a cold that's our topic for today so if you guys have questions already please go ahead and ask me. Um, if you don't, I will just keep talking <laughs> because I love teaching. Um, for those who don't know who I am, my name is Ifi Umesiete. Um, I'm a pediatric nutritionist by profession, nutritionist generally. Hey, my name is Winning. Um, and I technically, I am one of the co-founders for Nutrition for Kids NG. She's here. Next up, please respect yourself. No, 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 no. I'm not sure what's going on with her network. I will try to invite her again. But yes, and I'm one of the co-founders, as I was mentioning. And essentially what we do here at Nutrition for Kids is focus on educating parents on the importance. Hi, Miss Black. Hi, good evening. Hello. Hello. <laughs> good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Yes, I hear you. How are you doing? Hi. Hi. Okay, good. Good, good. I'm Where? good. How are you? How's my little one? He's not a little one anymore. He's not an old man. Oh, gosh. Yes, yes, I can, can hear, hear you. Me? Good evening. Let's talk <laughs> respect yourself today. Good evening. I just say, hi, my little one. He's not a yes, little one anymore. He's not an old man. <laughs> We're just looking for a wife. Yes, uh, yeah, I, I want to do a shabby fast fast too. <laughs> oh, oh God. Please, can you allow you to add your clean hair? Before it's not easy. Nice, <laughs> you need to do it fast fast. <laughs> Why you I mean, yeah, he can become another woman's I mean, problem, I mean. I completely understand you. You're looking so good. I'm fine. So how are you doing today? Thank you. How's everything now? How is work? Good. That's good. So I was working. Working. <laughs> so much work. If 
sometimes I feel like I don't even have weekend because I will still in the uh, work. Yes, Goodness. But we thank God. We thank God that there's one thing to do. At least. So, hello everyone. Good evening. So, yes. Everyone that is coming from winning is winning. Welcome. Welcome. I am the uh, today. I'm just here. I'm just uh, present to answer questions. But I just I mean that <laughs> I'm here to learn. I just did. And so you asked me questions like that. Oh. <laughs> asked me questions like All right. That. So. so hello everyone. Good evening. So our topic No no continue. I'm just saying good evening to everybody. Oh, okay. So I was just saying that our topic for this evening is what to do before your child gets a cold, essentially. And I was just, you know, letting people know that, well, before you got here, I was telling people wonderful things about your age. (laughs) And how, how I absolutely love what you do. And that, you know, when the cold season, and a lot of children are getting cold, Qatar, you know, school just resumed for some, well, three weeks now or two weeks now into the first um, month of Jan- um, the year and essentially first month of second term for a lot of people. Um, and so a lot of parents, That's their cool. biggest issue right now is, is either the child's nose is blocked or they have a cold or they have some kind of form of Qatar. So one of the typical questions people ask is, how can I build my child's immunity? And one of the things I always say is that immunity Mm -hmm. is the entire body, right? It's not just a a thing or a a part of them. It's your entire body. For example, your skin is one of the biggest organs in the immune system, right? Because it's the first line of barrier. So if you don't protect your child's skin, then you're not protecting, you're not building their immunity, right? Or let's even talk about like mucus. For example, mucus has been deemed one of the enemies of immunity. Once a parent sees mucus coming out of their child from anywhere, something must be wrong. But in truth, mucus is actually the first sign that your body is actually building a strong immunity. Like it's trying to defend itself against something, right? And that's why there is now more production of mucus in the body. Because mucus lines your body from your eyes all the way down to your anus. Your entire body is practically, the entire insides are covered in mucus because it serves as a barrier. So I think today one of the focuses in helping parents fully understand how to prevent a cold from happening, I think we'll go through the three major barriers that protect your immune system. Because if you can successfully take care of these, then even when a cold or kata or something comes, you will know what to do to prevent it. So like I said, the first barrier is your skin. What you rub on your child's skin or what your child's skin comes in contact with is really going to make a difference as to whether you're going to prevent a cold or not. I'll give a typical example. So the weather is cold, right? And the average mother, her goal is to cover her child, make sure the child is covered. Don't, you know, don't let any cold, don't let cold enter the person's body, technically. That's our viewpoint. But what happens is dependent on the, t- the, the temperature and you know, like for example, inside is going to obviously be warmer than outside okay. if the weather is cold. So what people try to do is, okay, yeah, inside the house, I'm not going to use the AC. I am, I'm not going to use fan. I will just open the window so that breeze will enter. And then I'm going to wear you, for moms who have little babies, I'm going to wear you a onesie that is long sleeve. I will still wear you socks inside the onesie. I will still wear vest inside. I will still wear you a cap. So what you're doing is, aside from the body trying to regulate its own temperature, you're regulating the temperature for the body itself. So the person might sweat, dependent, especially if the temperature starts getting hotter, right? When children sweat and you don't dry the sweat on their body, they are going to catch a cold. The child is going to catch a cold. Because in essence, what you've done is the body temperature has risen, so the body gets hot. After that, the body has to cool down. So it produces sweat. But what happens is you now leave the sweat to dry on the person's body because you have so many layers that you've not removed, right? They are trying to protect the person from cold. By morning, when that sweat has dried, and this is this is a cycle, so the person will sweat, it will dry, the sweat it will dry. When the person wakes up in the morning and is sneezing or has cough, or you will not be asking yourself, ah, I opened the windows for too long, I should have closed it. Ah, but I wore you cap, I wore you. 
person has been sweating and it has been drying and that singular act alone is enough to give a child a cold just that act alone is enough to give a child a cold so it's important to when you're when you want even if you want to protect your child from cold right one of the things that i always say is have removable layers or have breathable clothes cotton is one of those things that I always recommend for moms with younger children. Because cotton is one, it's breathable. Two, it's easy to layer it, right? Like you can put a blanket over your child. Or like in a situation, you can wear them socks. So don't wear a woolly onesie, <laughs> a cover them with cap, and see where they invest. Choose one. You either are going to wear a cotton onesie, uh -huh. right? and then maybe cover the head and leave it's them. Normal. Or you wear yes. vests and wear them pants so that it's... Grandma, if you're grandma, I don't know, because the thing just is... <laughs> grandma, you need to talk to grandma, please. Said it, I'm just please. imagining grandma, my mom. I remember when I had my own child too. Oh my God, the dressing was not here. Wear, wear, inner wear, wear this weather. Wear socks, wear cap, wear meetings. We'll not use Rafa and Tahim. The boy will not look oh like God. us, like... I'm like, <laughs> and it's not smooth time it's not cutting it's all this wool so that the cold do not enter and the, the, the house wool. will be so that hot even me the mother will be sweating <laughs> after we put maybe metal it on my baby. you know and i'm like oh, goodness me like i i see those children like I, i'll be in church and the, the, maybe the church in the ac is not working and i'll see a mom come in with this child that looks like they are going to to not the north pole or they are going to antarctica or somewhere that is freezing and i'm like is this child not sweating and then you know what's so funny you know because the person starts getting hot they get uncomfortable so they start crying then when they start crying they will not be looking maybe they'll say ah oh, no this person is hot no the person is hot <laughs> have breathable clothing right which now leads me to the next part a lot of children get a lot of rashes i i get this question all the time where somebody's like hey my child has a rash this is what is happening what is doing this what is not doing that and i always tell people that when a child has a rash right you kind of want to look at who has been carrying them what they've been wearing and what you're using to wash their clothes right oh you are you can't hear me can you hear me now Bless that she cries. It's not very audible. Guys, if you can't hear me loud and clear, please let me know. But I feel like I'm pretty loud. Or at least I, I can hear myself loud and clear. Okay, okay, okay. Who else? Apart from winning is winning. Who else can hear me? If you can hear me, let me know so that I can keep going. Yes, yes, yes. Just say yes. I can hear you loud and clear, or no, we can't hear you, it's not audible. Miss Bless, is it better now? It's better now. Please let me know. Okay, thank you, Ellen. Thank you. Thank you, Ada. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Okay, so yes, as I was saying, that's one part. Now, for moms that always say, oh, my child has a rash, one of the most common rashes, especially in Nigeria, yeah. is heat rash, right? Heat rash is, is something that will just happen. Now, heat rash looks different for different people. So I, I would, again, if you find that your child has rashes that are in particular places, maybe on their chest, around their forehead, right, review the amount of clothes they are wearing. Because more than likely, the person is hot. And if somebody is hot, mm. they will develop heat rash, yeah. right? Now, if it is now not a rash, maybe it's something else. Like I said, who is carrying them? So one of the things that I find is that a lot of people, their clothing itself can be quite irritating to the skin of a child. This doesn't have to be a young baby. It can even be a toddler. It can be a two-year-old. It can be a three-year-old. It's very irritating to the skin of the child. Maybe the kind of soap you're using or your own body sweat stuff is enough to yeah. irritate someone else's skin, especially children that have sensitive skin. So I would just review who carries them, especially if it's not somebody that has carried them before. I would just consider that. Then, of course, the kind of soap you use. Now, I've never been 
I mean, yes, there's soap that is mild and is perfect for children, which is great. And if it's something you can afford, go ahead and do that. But I always say just consider having just mild soap in your house that you're using to wash clothes. And the milder, the better. If, they, if the, the, the fragrance of the soap itself is really, really strong, more than likely it's going to irritate the skin of the child. The person you are washing their clothes for, do not roll around in the mud, especially most of us with children that literally don't let our children touch the ground. The person literally do not roll around in the mud. So you don't need something with such a strong smell because mm. the child doesn't really have body odor. If a child has body odor, it's either from the person that's carrying them on a regular basis or something else yeah. is wrong, right? Now, the final one, like I mentioned earlier, is um, the, the, what was it? the kind of material of the clothing that they're wearing. Some children get irritated. Like, for example, when my daughter was younger, her clothing itself, I had to choose only cotton for her because every other thing just seemed to irritate her skin. All this light like craft fabric, polyester, where the thing is mixed with polyester, it just irritated her skin. Or furry fabric seemed to irritate her skin. Now, the reason why I'm hammering on skin is because if you really want to prevent a cold from happening, or really generally any kind of infection from happening, you really, really, really want to ensure that you're protecting your child's skin. Now, moving on to the second layer, which is underneath the skin, which is usually your mucus lining. Now, the mucus lining is internal, the skin is external. If you can't, if you, for any reason, anything passes through the external, which is your skin, so through your eyes, nose, mouth, or ears, then it will go, then mucus will attack it next. If you see mucus in your children and it is clear, then there's nothing to worry about, even if it is more than usual. If it is clear, then there's nothing to worry about. If it is, if it starts changing color over a period, dependent on the, the state of the child. So for example, if your mucus starts changing color, maybe the mucus starts getting very thick and starts looking yellowish, and then the person, you start noticing that the child's demeanor has changed, okay. then there's problem, right? Or if for any reason you notice that the mucus is, um, um, you know, it's still, it's still runny, but the person starts having a fever. So it might still be clear, but the child might start having a fever there's a problem. The reason why I'm mentioning this is the job of mucus is to stick to bacteria and viruses, is to capture it. So it escapes the skin. So now the mucus will capture it. So if it is coming out, <laughs> what the signal is trying to tell you is that please help me to be coming out more. Not looking for what to stop it completely. Instead, focus on trying to get as much mucus out of your child as possible. Because essentially, it's like a cleansing. It's trying Let to get out ask, whatever what is bacteria or virus no, no, what 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 mucus yeah, is. Yeah, go ahead. Is it what the, like, attack? what is mucus? What, what do you say? Yes, yeah, so, so mucus is like catas, essentially, mm -hmm. when your child has catas coming out of their nose, or if you have like build up of mucus in their eyes, or if you have, um, what's it called, maybe, um, maybe they poo, for example, now, if the child poos a hair and there's mucus, and you see a little bit of mucus, I'll talk about that one last, but if you see mucus in their poo, so if it's coming out, help it to come out. Because it's trying to it's trying to get rid of something that is trying to um, um, grow in the child's body, right? Because viruses and bacteria multiply. It's trying to tell you that something is happening inside you. There is problem inside. I want to get it out, right? So I'm always very conscious when I start seeing mucus coming out because what it's trying to tell me is that okay, I'm, I have a very short period to arrest this thing that is trying to become a full blown infection. Let me try and get as much as possible. Now, the kicker is mucus running out of the nose or the eyes or whatever can last for a few days, sometimes more than a week. So that, at that point, a lot of parents are saying, eh, this person's nose has been running. Okay, I'll talk about that. This person's nose has been running for like two weeks now. And I don't, as long as the child is active, as long as the child is not from running a fever. Then they'll give antibiotics. And you start giving antibiotics. No, it is just allow the body to do what the body needs to do. It has a job, it's trying to do it, and you're preventing it from doing that. Now, how do you help mucus come out? Blow the child's nose. That's number one. If it's coming from the nose, blow their nose. Number two, aromatherapy and steam inhalation. Aromatherapy is when you use essential oils with warm water or hot water, 
that helps to um, alleviate, it, it sets, sets off alarms in the system that helps to alleviate um, bacteria and viruses. Now, the typical ones I usually recommend are either tea tree oil or um, peppermint essential oil. Now, you can use silver bird or I say silver bird, silver bird or um, eucalyptus oil, but please, please, God, the evil, please don't apply it on your child. Silver bed. A bed. If that's what you have been doing, please stop it. Yes, silver bed. Please just stop it. A bed. It's dangerous to their skin. You can cause issues. You can cause health issues. You can cause kidney. Like the list is endless. So please don't apply it on their skin. Drop it in the water. Let them inhale it and let the mucus come out. Okay? Now, another one for children who can't blow their nose. One of the things, yes, exactly. Exactly. One of the things, now steam inhalation is the same thing as aromatherapy. You're just not using any oils. You're just using hot water and steam. Now, two things. You can either have the child sit and inhale, or you cover them with a towel. Or if it's a little baby, right, one of the things I always recommend is put them in a bath. They are like that. They are a bathtub, right? Then put a bucket with the warm water are close to them. <laughs> Please be there. Don't oh, leave hot water with small children. <laughs> Give the bucket, yes, for newborns. Keep the bucket close by, right? And then direct the steam. So it, what I always recommend is if it's a, look for a, the smallest room or like a small place in the house and cover all the doors, cover all the windows so that the steam will circulate in that room. So that that room will literally turn into like a steam room so that the child can actually inhale it, especially for little babies. Because you don't want to be covering yeah. a little baby over a bucket of water. A bed, a bed. <laughs> So you focus, you really, the focus, the focus is really to just ensure that the thing gets to them. Same thing applies for the me, methyl and the methylator. Methylator has no business on your body, in your child's body or rub. It should be in the bucket of water so that they can inhale it. Okay? So that's how you help me first come out of the body. Yes, you can also use a humidifier as well. Um, but one of my issues with humidifiers is they don't direct, um, no, it shouldn't enter the person's eyes because it's steam. So unless the person's head is literally inside the bucket, like I don't even know how to explain. You have to, your head has to be inside bucket, and then the amount you're dropping should not be more than two drops. And the bucket of water, the water that will be in that bucket, I don't even have a bucket. Oh, nice. Okay. Let us assume this is the bucket, right? And you can see this line. The water should not. Assuming this is a full bucket, and you can see this line here. The oh, you can enter with the great hard drive. The water itself. Or just stay okay. around okay. Yeah. There we go. The water itself should be just uh, stay here. The water itself should not be more than this. And the amount, the drop of water you add is just two drops. I'm going to talk about nebulizers in a little bit. Nebulizers are not something everybody should have. It's not a typical device that you just find and keep in your house. Nebulizers are ideal for children who are known to have frequent respiratory issues. And another thing with nebulizers is if it is a child who needs medication, you better make sure that that medication is under prescription because the, bron the, the medication that typically you put in nebulizers are called bronchodilators. Bronchodilators, the side effects are not funny. Um, I shared in the last slide that I've, I've been an asthmatic patient for years. So this is, I'm not just talking from experience and leave this. When you use too much, <laughs> you can literally pass out. Like you just pass out if you use too much bronchodilators because they, 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 do, they, they literally release so much of your lungs that you now have too much oxygen in your system or sometimes it makes you really dizzy. So it's not something you want to be messing with without proper guidance, without proper prescription. Now, typically in hospital, what they will do if a child is stuffy is they will use saline, right? Which is the same thing as using um, saline drops um, um, selling drops in their nose. Now, there are some nasal yeah. sprays that I've heard of that have medication in them. That's not what I'm recommending here. Under no circumstances should you be using medication that is not over-the-counter, um, um, like basic first aid. And nasal sprays <laughs> are not basic um, first aid. If it's not selling drop, if it's not selling drop and it's not um, nasal selling drop, every other one is not basic. It has a high dose of some kind of medication that if you go and use it like you are using saline drop or something happens to your child, you have only yourself to blame. You cannot blame another person. Because I remember, I think it was last year, 
someone sent me something, I think from Facebook. So the child ha the child's nose has been stuffy for I think about a week now. Mucus was coming out. Mucus was clear. The mom was told somebody told her somewhere in that Facebook group that she should get one nasal spray. She went to get the nasal spray and and put in and that was only blocking their nose. Yeah, that, that's fine. You can just put a little of the aboniki inside the bucket. The goal here is just to help them breathe. Now, my concern with aboniki balm is that it's very strong. Very, yeah, very, very strong. very strong. <laughs> so I don't. It's not. It's not my go-to. That's like if if all else has failed, and you don't have any other thing in your house, fine. But please, it's not the first thing you should go. Essentially, if you're on this call, so maybe I should talk about the basic things for aromatherapy that should always be in your house. For me, I use essential oils. What type of essential oils? I never really oil. like the smell of silver bed, generally speaking. I use tea tree essential oil or peppermint essential oil. I always have tea tree essential oil for my hair, so it's always in my house. If I don't have tea tree, I will have peppermint, okay. and I always use one okay. of the two of them. To me, they are slightly safer. And they are not as, like, the, the potency is not as strong inside hot water. Now, somebody said something about diffusers. I was going to touch on it before I deviated to nasal spray. Sure, don't use any nasal spray that has medication for your children, please. Because that woman, what happened to her was not even funny. Her child started sleeping for longer. Like, maybe if he was sleeping for two hours, that is sleeping for, like, six hours. So she thought maybe he was getting better. Until one day, she decided to spray the thing she has been spraying in his nose, inside her nose. When she slept for four hours, she now realized that there was a real problem. I had to take her child to the hospital. So please, under no circumstances, please do not do it. Um, welcome, Achilles Natural. So yes, this live video is going to be recorded. So um, so just if you're using nebulizers, please make sure it is, because nebulizers, like I said, are not things that you just buy. If you live outside Nigeria, they won't even give you nebulizer. You have to go to hospital to get it under prescription. And that is after they've done a series of tests. If you live in Nigeria, nebulizers are not the cheapest <laughs> things to be having in your house. Buckets of water mm. is better for you. If you now have to go to the hospital, most hospitals will just do the staining in the nebulizer. Cause it, and it's so funny because it's the same thing. What a nebulizer does, it, it turns liquid to steam. That's what it does. So it's the same thing if you are doing just typical skin inhalation. Um, diffusers are good, but I advise you to get a wide mouth diffuser. A lot of the diffusers I've seen, the mouth is small, like the spout from where the steam is coming out from. It's really tiny. So it is only, it literally, if your child is doing their head like this, <laughs> shaking their head and doing like this, the steam will just be passing from one side of their face to the other side. It do, it's not going to direct into their nostrils or even into their mouth. Sometimes, like when I do simulation for my kids, I tell them, open your mouth and open your nose. Mm -hmm. Let everything be entering one place. So that, and then I even tell like my kids when they were older, I would say close your eyes. When they were younger, I used to have small goggles. I used to have small goggles that they would wear to cover their eyes so that the thing would not enter their eyes. When they were much smaller. And that's because my children would not do some children would not want anything on their face. So I know it's a war, but try. Um I was yeah, so get a wide mouth diffuser or a wide mouth <coughs> humidifier. Either one of them works and does the same thing and is actually a bit safer than bucket of hot water. But like I said, these are all the options that you have, right? Now, you, I think you asked me a question. I think I've lost my train of thought now. Well, Someone asked, how do, you, uh, so you said, how do you use oil? How do you use tree, tea tree oil for mucus? Okay, so yes. Yeah, so I was saying that this is for inhalation right you're putting it into a bucket of water now another way to use it and this is for older children children who are at least five and above or children who are who can handle it i typically will drop it on the pillow in my child's room and then she will just lie on her on the, on you know the side facing it and would inhale it that way so i just drop a few drops I used to do it for my daughter because she tolerated it pretty well. And honestly, a few drops of that, her nose is cleared up. She's sleeping. She's fine. I wouldn't recommend it for children who cannot turn their head. In fact, if your child is under five, five, please don't do five it. months, don't do it. If your child is five, yes. five years old, if your child is under five years old, please don't do it. Um, but if they are both five, then you can try. <laughs> if they will keep their head in one place. Then, because again, like I said, none of these things should touch your skin. Even the tea tree oil, even the, the that's the original tea tree oil, the tea tree oil that you touch your skin, not your apple. 
but it, they 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 are they are called um, hormone disruptors. So if you use too much of it or too much of it gets into your skin on a regular basis, it can cause hormone imbalance. It's happening with a lot of women and a lot of young girls. So just be mindful of that. It has no business on your skin. If you're even going to apply it in your hair, and this is now going off topic, if you're even going to apply it in your hair, it must be in a carrier oil, so like coconut oil or, or kinematic. coconut oil, um, olive oil, whatever oil you are using, shea butter, whatever oil you are, it should be in that, and it's just a few drops. That's by the side, but they shouldn't touch your skin directly, then it's not ideal, um, especially for tea tree and peppermint. So now we've talked about, you know, getting rid of mucus. Now I want to go into the final thing I'll talk about, and then people can ask whatever questions they want to ask. Now, another thing to do to prevent your child from getting a cold is understand mm -hmm. the times and the season. I said this thing last week. For some reason, every cold and rainy season catches mothers <laughs> by surprise. I don't know why. It's like this thing just shocks you. It happens every year. But it still shocks you funny enough my son does my baby it does not have issues with cold so cold is not really like an issue for for me actually i, I think yeah, i think mm -hmm. it's very important to understand your environment environment plays an important mm -hmm. role when it comes to your child whether it be it's cold infection malaria the environment that your child is in is number one like we human beings we live in an environment we have a body and we have a soul we have a spirit so now the environment really matters especially for children now if your house is dirty definitely infection will come around infection will come knocking because children will always be children they'll pick stuff to eat and all that and you have to start teaching your children how to imbibe this neat culture because if your child is eating something from the floor you should expect an infection to happen do you get and secondly, in preventing yeah. infection and cold, you should also live, um, leverage on your nutrition. That's very important. You should leverage on your nutrition. And it's not every mm -hmm. time a child has a fever that you think the child is sick. It's not really, it's just an immune system that is trying to react that something is happening. Oh, I'm trying to fight this. So please clap for me. Oh. Not the one with Uganda, go and start looking for antibiotics. And Every time a child has exactly is a cause for exactly. So I feel like very exactly is so your environment and the level of nutrition that because it, it helps their immune system. Yeah. Either it brings it down, or it takes it up, or it makes it fight. So I think those two things are very very important that mothers should pay attention to. Yeah, because even when you talk about even the environment. There are some people that live in Nigeria and, for example, if you live in Abuja, Abuja gets very yeah. dry during dry season, right? It's slightly colder than yeah. Lagos, and for example. So the idea that you're... And dusty, exactly. So yeah. you're supposed to be preparing for it, meaning if you are cleaning oh. less, you should be cleaning yeah. more at that time. Same thing for people who live in the east. In the east, the weather is something else. The cold is not even, especially if you live in hilly parts, especially for moms that travel, that go to maybe their village or their hometown or whatever. That's the time that you should have, in fact, a month before your child, if you are not careful about your, your child's nutrition, a month before you make that trip, you should increase your child's benefit to fruits, to vegetables, you know, making sure they are getting adequate fiber, making sure they are drinking enough water. Because what happens is, you go to the village, excitement is happening, yeah. and they start eating nonsense. Then you come back, and the child now has an infection and a cold, and you are wondering what is happening. <laughs> and you are looking for solutions. You can't be looking for a solution when you are the cause of the problem to begin with. Prepare before that time comes, so that even if it comes, it might not even be as bad as usual or what you're suspecting. Because like I said, if you're going to an environment that is going to be colder than your typical environment, these are all things, or dustier, you know, or drier. For example, dry season in Nigeria, especially for states where it gets really, really, really dry. That is, bacteria is easier. There are certain kinds of viruses that travel easier in the air 
during dry season. Dry season. That's why it's so much easier for children to catch infections then, irrespective of how clean you are, how how nice your house is, and how fantastic your child's nutrition is. It's just a season because there's more viruses in the air because they can be carried easier by the wind and the weather. So preparing the child before we enter that place. That's why I love what Nini Uzuni said. Nutrition is paramount. Nutrition is not for now. Because I think a lot of us try to find immunity boosters for now. You need to be doing it yeah. all the time, right? It's supposed to be a normal part of your child's diet. Working on feeding them adequate amounts of, of vegetables. Like, for example, my children are eating lunch right now, and they are eating vegetable soup and rice because I need vegetables. So it's ugu, it's whatever vegetable like a fresh green. The place is full of green things, and they are eating it and they are eating it fine. Now I've come a long way, <laughs> a very long way with my children's nutrition. It's not something I've ever joked with. And so when somebody says, "Oh, how will I get my children to do it?" Start now. If I had, if I had waited another four years to try it, I might not be here today, right? Start now. Cook something that has a lot of vegetables in it. Steam vegetables if you need to. I was telling a patient the other day that it was just last year that my children started eating the, um, salad, like an actual salad on the side of their plate. And she was like, ah, you of all people. I said, yes, because prior to then, the vegetables were yeah. mixed into the food. So when I started serving it as a salad, it was not strange to them. Nobody was saying, ew, yucky, or picking it out, or doing whatever, because I have insisted for majority of their life that vegetables are a primary part of your diet. Another thing is you, yourself, you tend to only eat the vegetables alone. They need to join you. I don't care if the person picks it out from now to forever. Keep serving it. I don't care if the person throws it at you. Keep serving it. Anyone they throw at you, eat it. The one that is remaining, because vegetables will not do anything to you, rather than uh, trying to finish up their cereal. Instead, look for, in fact, I was even telling, I tell a lot of my patients, and I tell a, moms in, a lot of moms in the nutrition for kids community, as you are blending fruit puree, be blending vegetable puree and fruit. As you are blending, they will do, remember that the sea okra that will come, remember that ugu is still a, a thing. Remember that um, um, what at least is still a vegetable. Remember that, um, what's it called? Um, shock or it's still a vegetable. Remember all the vegetables that you eat, that you enjoy. All these things can be primary in your child's diet right from the beginning. Don't wait because a lot of us will start doing only fruit puree, fruit puree, fruit puree, and forget that vegetable is an actual thing. It can be a vegetable and a fruit. Make it a major part of their diet because when you do that, you tend to have fewer incidences of illness. I mean, malaria is if mosquito bites you, you pray to God that you are not one of those people that when mosquito bites you, malaria will come. But that one is far and in between. Because just like you said, my son hardly ever gets a cold. The most that he will have is malaria. And that's because mosquito has beaten him. I can't stop mosquito from biting him. So it's really, really important that we really understand this concept of nutrition. If you are confused about what to do, if it's something that you are struggling with, if it's something that's giving you headache before, you have access to so many resources. Nutrition for Kids provides more than enough resources for moms to really get answers to anything from recipes to lectures. I mean, the lectures are endless. This conversation that we're having today, there's a full, I think it's like a one-hour lecture on nutrition for kids where we break down everything that has to do with nutrition. And again, we are, we are setting up to have the PEACH Challenge. Yay! If you don't know what the PEACH Challenge is, the PEACH Nutrition Challenge is a two-week program that teaches you everything that you need to know from A to Z on your child's nutrition. And it's coming up in a few, in a few weeks. Um, so you can, I think registration starts next week. Join. Because I don't want anyone to still enter rainy season and still come back and say eh, we are we are started having cold again if you start feeding your child better now when rainy season comes you will not have the same issues yeah yeah because if you can fix it now when rainy season comes you won't have the same issues all right that's my little spiel <laughs> last question thank you so much professional <laughs> We've learned so much today, especially the clothing. The type of clothing that you wear really matters. Yeah. Um, I learned that one, especially babies. Yeah. 
to wear grammars will help us to master them put different layers I understand them they are just trying to say because baby was in the womb it was warm and everything so they feel like now that the baby is outside the baby needs all the, the be like in <laughs> be like in the womb anything anything you people want to tell yourself to make yourself feel better please feel free because you know what's so funny if that was the case you know when children are born they just wrap them in a cloth if that was the case why are they not using heavy duty blankets to cover the person when they come out of your womb since the womb the, the womb the womb was hot the womb was hot and outside this why did they use if they should have used a four layer blanket to it's wrap just, the head of the child just the, like because i'm just like up with now sentiments everything cultural shock so it's like ah, no this baby has to <laughs> has to be covered very well no no that baby is already prepared to face the challenges that this world has starting with breast milk we must sort that thing out <laughs> yes yeah, so. yes yeah, so. and it's so funny because the first milk you get if you if you breastfeed the yeah. first milk which is cholesterol is like is like yeah. an immunity shock literally before the child even gets like immunizations and anything, colostrum is so high in um, antibodies that are designed to protect the child from anything that they're experiencing. That's why it's so yellow and so thick because it's like, a, it's like, it's not, it's like somebody's giving you a shot of immunity injection mm -hmm. from that first suck. So God already designed it such that everything you need is within the body. But B, I think the most, that, and that's why I'm always big on education because People yeah. will perish for lack of knowledge. Saying I don't know <laughs> is not saving anybody anymore. Saying I don't know is the truth. Saying I don't know is not saving anybody anymore. So wherever you can tap knowledge from, be tapping it. Not anyhow knowledge. Knowledge <laughs> that makes sense. Tap it. Because it saves makes... you time. It saves you energy. Yes, now because there's <laughs> knowledge that does not make sense. There are, there are false prophets everywhere that are talking rubbish oh and, and nonsense all over the place. So knowledge that makes sense is very important because honestly speaking a lot of us moms are winging it in parenting which is normal i mean i winged it you know i had some knowledge but i wing i still winged part of it and learned along the way but in the times and seasons that we are in there's so much happening so quickly that winging it is not beneficial to you before you know what is happening you now have a child who has had eight to ten antibiotics in their first two years mm -hmm. of life and what I'm seeing clinically now is a lot of children who have so much medication to thrive, as well as children who are not exposed to it. Speech-wise, they don't do well. Milestones, they don't do well. Like, they, they are delayed. And that's because the medications we are creating in the world today are so much stronger because the ones that were not as bad before, the, the bacteria is now resistant to it because we've abused it. So they have to get a new dose, a higher dose. You know, it's not the same anymore. So we really, really need to gather as much knowledge and to allow the body to do its work so that you are not at the mercy of medication. You are not at the mercy of drugs. You are not at the mercy of um, clinical mishaps because clinical mishaps happen a lot. I remember a patient in 2019, her son was allergic to antibiotics and she had been giving him the antibiotics without prescription and every time he gave him he broke out with a rash and would have diarrhea so he wasn't gaining weight and she was buying all the weight to gain everything and it still wasn't working every other month he was falling sick you know by the time we established what the issue was this little boy was going to three years old so much time had been lost when 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 I and her doctor now realize that, oh, okay, this is where the issue is. Because she'll come into the hospital and say, oh, we've already started medication, so there's very little the doctor can do. The doctor will just say, oh, yeah, um, okay, we have to give this, we have to give a different one now because you've done this one and it clearly didn't work. They will run, you know, it, it's just, it's a mess. So we really, really need to gather knowledge so that we, our children don't continue to suffer at the mercy of confusion because it comes from a good place. As a mom, it's, come, it's always coming from a good place, right? It's never from a place where you want to hurt your child or, you know, put them in discomfort. But if you don't have the knowledge and you go and do the one they did not send you, 
we will always have problems. And the problem with medication is, if not today, it will catch. It's later on. So thank you all for coming to my TED Talk. That's <laughs> <laughs> Oh, my God. Yes, please. I what I wanted to say. I feel like people are just joining, joining, joining. Who has questions? If you've learned something, let us know. If this has made sense to you, if you pick one or two things, just drop a comment so that we know that we're yeah, not no, talking no. to ourselves yeah. things because we are heading yeah, out. My baby, <laughs> my baby is not eating. Laughing. What can I do? You do not address that one. So this one does not concern. I didn't even see. No, it's not. I didn't even see the question. Just say mostly, most mostly. The question. They will oh, it's not. Say my baby is not eating. Oh, so what can I do? So that's what the ex everybody expects every day. <laughs> Oh, that's the ball because I always get over this thing. So, okay, so what for colleagues? I think that colleague goes on his own. There's nothing you can do. I remember when my little one had colleague. I was always trying yeah. to give all this colleague medicine. I'll see it in counter colleague, colleague. He goes on his own. You just have to try as much as you can to calm your baby. So, here's what I typically say. Don't use the don't use medication for colic because most of them are not really colic. Um, okay, so there's something called yeah, there's something called the placebo effect. The placebo effect is where you give so okay, so let's say me and you now we are taking medication, right? And they give me sugar in the form of the medication and give you the medication. Because I think that two of us are getting the medication, my symptoms yeah. might be getting better, right? So really, really, what those chronic medications are for is like sugar, water, or just maybe they had a few things. Ne there's never really medication, medication. It's just to make you the more that feel better that you are doing something. That's it. Actual doing anything. That's really what those things are. So it's actually it's waste of money. Because the truth is, you will give you will give baby air and you're like, ah, it's working. Oh, something is working. Oh, it's really working. Ah, this one really works. It's here, it's in your mind. It's in your I mind. remember one thing is going back when there. I was very sick, so they, they were so, giving me a lot of anti analgesic. I think they gave me pentazine, diclofenac. So it was too much. So at that end, I was addicted to pentazine. So that day, the doctor and I came and said, okay, they just gave me something. So I didn't know. So my mind was that this is pentazine because it's white. So I now slept and woke up. Yes. And I said, congratulations, it was water we gave you. <laughs> from your mind so it was like okay actually you can do without this thing but you're the one just wanting it so it was like hey, we just gave you what time because we cannot kill you in this place it's too much so I was like okay so that's when i started controlling my mind okay i can manage whatever it is with my mind it will go it will go it will go because healing starts from yeah. the mind so if you keep pumping your babies with all these drugs at this time it's not advisable so just allow colleague met him to be on his own and just i feel it's petting your child it will calm down it will take like i think my own stop yeah. before six months it already stopped i think for yeah. colleague yeah. yeah. just try stop, as yeah. much as can to breastfeed always carry your baby always try to pet your baby but all this medication might not work someone is asking what can i do instead of of colleague mates how do what you can do so dependent on how you are breastfeeding i always say number one if you are breastfeeding try not to slouch sit up straight and make sure your child's head is mm -hmm. up as much as possible because what happens is colic colic is caused by air air getting into their system and is not you know air is in is gas in their stomach so sit up straight so that there is no, there's not so much slouching and allowing of air gaps as much as you can. If you can prop pillows on your back, if you're breastfeeding, fine. If you use bottles, make sure that the teeth of the bottle, there's always milk inside. Always. Never should it be half full or quarter full or empty because they will suck air. Then another thing that really, really helps is bicycle kicks. So if you notice that the child is getting really uncomfortable, stop feeding and, you know, do their leg as if they are riding a bicycle to release some of that gas 
from their system as much as possible. Now, most of these things really do help from others. Petting the baby, like she said, and getting them to birth really makes a world of a difference. But if your child's quality is really, 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 really bad, eh, make sure that you feed small, small. Don't feed large quantities because if there's, or if there's, if there's air already in their system, most of the time when you feed again, they are full and it's harder to get the air out. So feed, feed um, intermittently. Mm -hmm. That's what I would advise. Then someone is asking, how do I start introducing veggies? You can chop up carrots, steam them if you want. We don't think women have a hundred of these things on her page. Please just flip them. <laughs> because if I want to start explaining it, I feel like I would just be going on and on and on. Someone said, <laughs> but seriously, chop bicycle kicks for how many how many minutes for as long as until the child comes down the goal is to get the gas out so if you do it and the child come and the child starts to come down fine it can be as long it can be as little as five minutes it can be as long as 10 minutes you know whatever whatever gets the child to be Comfortable because that movement is causing the stomach to move and okay. you're helping the gas to move out, right? This is after you burp the child, though. Don't do bicycle kick after somebody <laughs> has eaten yep. food, they will vomit on you. Oh no, she's frozen. Yeah, so I was saying something. Can you guys still hear me? If you can hear me, I think. Between this net of his behavior. So I was asking a question. You can chop carrot, you know, carrot. So let me let me use how I started. And then, like I said, winning is winning speech has a lot of um, ways of introducing solids. Oh no, I think it's a network. She'll come back. Has ways of introducing solids, especially like vegetables. But what I did was I started with um, adding the veggies into the meals themselves. So my children never really ate puree. It just wasn't my thing. I was ready to hit the ground running. So it was pap cereal and normal food. That's the way we went. Um, so I never did apple, banana, puree, banana. I didn't do any of these things. Um, and this is just my personal preference because I had a goal in mind and where I was going was stiffer. So I didn't want to come and be delaying the process. So I did a lot of like things like veggie rice, which was like rice with carrots, with peas, um, sometimes I would add um, sweet corn and I would blend that all together with a little chicken stock or bits of chicken. So I usually cooked my children's food on their own in the beginning before I eventually um, before I eventually went ahead to, to start maybe making it softer and mushier, stuff like that. So I always, so whatever meal I was making, I was adding the veggies into it so whether it was rice whether it was potatoes whether it was yam you know swallow most of the time the swallows they made their own soups themselves so it's always had ubu you know friendly whatever the case was that's what i used to do so i hope that helps but like, like i said in in is winning she has ways of chopping carrots you know ways of and and the truth is all vegetables count red pepper green pepper yellow pepper uh, carrot um, um celery Ugu, shoko, scent leaf, um, kale, what else is there? All the vegetables count, literally. There's none that is off limits. Uh, whatever vegetable, if you just make sure you wash it very well and you clean it very well and you make it into a palatable form. What is going on with your network? Oh. You're welcome, Anita. What is going on with your network? I don't know what's going on with Winnie's Winnie's network. Go. We'll try and wait for her to try and join. If not, it would be me saying bye bye. Um, who else has questions? If you still have questions, definitely ask me. I've got about five more minutes on here. I hope this has been helpful. And like I was saying earlier, if you haven't joined Nutrition for Kids community, you need to join today, like right now, now, now. And as I was mentioning, the Peace Channel, Peace Nutrition Challenge, the two week program where it's online. Um, and we're going to be teaching different lectures. You have access to me all the time, whenever, whatever. Um, and honestly, it's my favorite time of the year because it's fun, it's interactive, you're learning. We've got different lectures from immunity to picky eating to allergies. The list is endless, really, of all the things that you're going to learn. There's recipes, 
um, there's new plans. But I think for me, the biggest part of the PIT challenge is the amount of education that you get. What we teach eh, is good enough to be a two-year course. But you get to learn everything in 14 days. So hopefully you guys get to join. I think registration opens this week. Um, and so when you see the link, you see us advertising, please join. And this year we have something really, really special um, for the people that are just by. <laughs> <laughs> We have left us. Oh my God. We have, we have left us. Please join, join the Peace Challenge because this year, one of the things that we kind of struggled with in the past was how to really help moms who didn't live in Nigeria integrate. And we worked it out, and I'm so excited because it's going to be amazing. A lot of the recipes are created to help you really integrate. I mean, we still cater widely to Africa because that's our focus. But as if people are living in Africa, they're like chasing you there because nutrition will fool everybody. Especially so, when junks yeah. are much more closer than them. Yeah, so. Nigeria, <laughs> <laughs> same. We are oh. trying. We are still letting you walk. Do you know, eh, if, if, somebody, if somebody had told me maybe 20 years ago that, especially when I went to school, because I went to school in the U.S., and one of the biggest things that I've suffered was my diet. And I just, I've, I've, I'm a picky eater. I am very selective about what I eat. So when I entered university, I thought I could wing it, you know, eating anyhow, eating for more. The first thing that happened to me was severe dehydration. Do you, you know what it is for somebody to be dehydrated? When you wake up in the morning and you don't have saliva in your throat? <laughs> what I experienced. From severe dehydration. You, yeah, I'm even talking about mucus running. I didn't even have saliva. Like, I would wake up in the morning and my throat would be dry. Like, somebody poured um, um, hot gas in my mouth and I couldn't generate saliva. Why? Because I was drinking mostly juice. I forgot that water was a real thing. Then imagine waking up and your throat is dry. Then you don't go and drink juice instead of drinking water. Oh, God. And it's so funny because everything else, uh, everything is so much more concentrated. In Nigeria, for economy reasons, our Fanta is diluted, our Coke is diluted. If you drink Coke <laughs> in the UK or in the US, you will know that in Nigeria, they're not, they like us. Because the Coke here, yeah. <laughs> if you pour it on the floor, the floor will change color. <laughs> <laughs> so... I, 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 you have a lot. You have a lot more work to do if you're moving abroad. Don't just think that you are just going, you know, and you will go and you reach yeah. and the, the land will be green. Well, the land is you can green. Read the you can read At least they made their label something that you should read and know. And then you will read it's better you retire. not to I remember reading at all. At... Well, it... no, of course, of course, but. One thing I even want to tell people is that when you even read labels, eh, don't get discouraged because you read labels with time. <laughs> <laughs> you can be quite oh exhausting, to be honest. Um, Just avoid all the big. Quite exhausting. Cook at home. The more you cook at home, the less you have to deal with anything that is packaged. Make your make more home meat. Yes. What's happening with network? What's happening with network? No much work. Yeah, I think you've answered most questions that every everybody had. Thank well, thank you everybody for joining. Hope to see you when in the peace started. challenge. And we will see you guys next week. It's starting March. It's March second. So we have a we month. Please, please, sign please up I beg you, people, you. please. Collect your PVC, I beg, I beg. If you've not collected, you go and collect it too, please. Nigeria is not what we want it to be, I beg. For your children, I beg. Me, I have my own since I've been voting, 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 voting since I was 18. It's always fun for me. So I'm always surprised when I see people, they've not collected PVC. I'm like, ah, <laughs> God. Voting is actually very When I No, but the, 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 the truth is that they make it so frustrating. The first time I went to pick up my PVC, I had to take off work two days in a row. And not just was I taking off work. So you know how you take off work, then you're at home. So you can go out anytime. I was leaving earlier than I was leaving to go to work. Just so that when I get there, the line will not be as long as the river now. 
And then on, on top of that, I still couldn't collect it. But I insisted that I was going to collect it. So if the thing is paining you, the way it is paining a lot of us, if you need to queue in the line for days and weeks, if they tell you that your PVT is in Sokoto and you live in Zamfara, find a way to collect it. Find a way to collect it because if we don't, yes. we are in trouble. Yes. If, you, if we don't vote the right person into seats, we are in trouble. That's just the reality of it. That's the reality of it. All right, thank, thank you everybody for joining yeah. us. This has been great and See awesome. You. Thank you for, for having me, <laughs> winning is winning community, and hopefully yes, we'll get sir. to see you guys again soon. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Bye.